Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you are subscribed, thank you so much. If you are not subscribed, I'm journaling my life every day in 2020, uh, talking about my struggles with mental illness and just life in general. Um, so, yeah, I've been vlogging for three months straight. Today is the 91st day. Um, if you guys are here watching, uh, you get to spend the year with me. So, uh, you know, I don't have to go through this alone. Uh, sometimes when you guys comment and stuff, it really makes me feel less alone. Uh, and I'm sure it helps other people feel less alone too, uh, cause more of us out there that talk about it. Um, the more of us know we're not alone. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Um, so yeah, yesterday, my brother, um, and my cousin, uh, oddly enough, I'm more bothered about my cousin and what she said about my second cousin and her multiple attempts at suicide than I am my brother calling me and telling me that my biological mother is going to die yesterday or today. As far as I know, she's still alive. He drove to San Diego to visit her because he believes that she's gonna, she's in her final days. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what the situation is, um, but I do know the last interaction I had with her, she told me to fuck off. So um, our relationship has been on and off for years and she has not been in my life way more than she has been so um well I may seem cold I've been really hurt by this person and it's not even a matter of it's kind of like you know you keep walking on your foot and you walk on it so often that eventually you'll get a callus and it'll just build up and so your feet are like you don't even feel the the rough surface underneath you anymore it's kind of like I don't even know if that's a good analogy I guess it's it's like you know if someone if you you can try as hard as you want and you could just sit there and let someone punch you in the face over and over again but eventually you're gonna have to like put your arms up and like block them um, and I feel like she, like when I was in my first manic episode, um, she told me that she had, I was completely out of my mind. And she told me that she had cancer. She said that she had ovarian cancer and breast cancer at the same time. <clears throat> and she didn't tell me until about 10 years later that she made that up, that it was a complete lie. Um, and I asked her, you know, well, I was in the midst of a manic episode. Why would you tell me that? Why would you lie to me like that? And she, she said, well, I thought it would help snap you out of whatever you were going through. And that's kind of like insane. How is elevating someone's stress to a point of when they're already like, completely cracked it's like uh throwing wood on the fire you know um but I don't know I don't know I will see if she dies over the next couple of days I don't think so um I think it's a ploy to get money I think she's definitely sick because she has been abusing herself but she's a drug addict and um perhaps she's switched to a different drug I don't know my brother said that she's not eating and that she's in hospice, but she isn't in the hospital and nobody can seem to tell me what she is dying from. Come on. Like, I don't know. M my husband's really like, doesn't believe it. And so I guess like, he's kind of like, but it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. I still have no desire to talk to her. She, she's, abandoned me five million times in my life. I've, I've tried repeatedly to even have an arm's length distance relationship with her and it has not worked because 
A, she's a trigger for me, and B, she's manipulative, and she lies, and she is, uh, she's just not a good person, and she takes advantage of people, and she just doesn't care. She's a narcissist. She only cares about herself, and, um, you know, my brother, he has such an amazing heart. He's such an amazing person he's so loving he loves her unconditionally and he's like hopping in the car and he's gonna be the first one there to be by her side and she doesn't give a shit about him <clears throat> she hasn't shown him love his entire life and he has unconditional love for her no matter how poorly she treats him no matter how insane she gets and um Yeah, it sucks. Anyway, um, I made it through the day. When I talked to my psychiatrist last night, she uh, she upped both my medications, <clears throat> which is, she never really upped both of them at the same time, but she upped my Lamictal by 50 milligrams and she upped my Prazosin from three milligrams to five milligrams. Um, So, I don't know, my husband's like, wow, your psychiatrist must really be concerned about you. It's hard to talk to a psychiatrist. You don't know how to talk to them. Um, but I don't want to go into that right now. Yeah, I mean, today, I, I made it through the day. I, I'm not getting much music done because my husband's here working. Um, we gave Sebastian a bath today, and I wish I would have filmed it because... Since we can't go to the groomer, he's an older little dog, so you have to like squeeze his anal glands. It's super disgusting, so I usually just pay the groomer to do it for like $10. But since we can't get a hold of the groomer, my husband did it. So I wish I would have filmed it because we literally watched a YouTube video to try to figure out how to do it. And um, <laughs> then we gave him a bath. <laughs> Poor guy, huh? it was hard, huh? They violated me. Oh, baby. Anyways. Um, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to feel uh, if she passes. I don't know. We'll see. Um, thank you so much for watching. And I will um, talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.